Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ryan, and welcome to week 37 of the Top 5 Mods of the Week. Now, hopefully, you guys will enjoy the mods that I've picked up for this week. Starting off at our number 5 spot, we have the Mystic Elven Armor Replacer. Now, this mod basically just changes the Elven Armor in the game to look, you know, more... It's, like, more brighter, and it's more... It has more of a bluish tint and more of a silver tint as well. It's, like, it's a little bit blue and a little bit silver as well. And the shield for it actually looks really amazing. I'm going to be showing you guys the shield for it. It has, like, a little bit of a glass structure around it, like a little bit of a ring around it filled with glass. And it's blue and it's nice and silver on it as well and it has a nice little logo on it as well so i think that's really awesome and it's a really awesome armor and i think it would be a great addition to your load order so i'd recommend giving this one a try Coming in at our number four spot, we have the Wolf Queen's Hunger mod. Now, this is actually a weapon mod, and uh, there are actually two different locations. There's one location where it can be found in the catacombs of the Blue Palace, or you can actually just craft it at the smithing station under the steel category. Now, it's more of a replica if you craft it. If you actually go to the Blue Palace, you can find the original version, but you actually have to do that whole quest with the Blue Palace and like the King Pelagius and stuff like that. So, if you don't want to do that quest, just make sure you have the steel category unlocked and then you can just create it yourself and then upgrade it however you want or you can go to the blue palace and do the quest and actually obtain it and it'll be a more powerful version this mod adds a standalone upgradable enchantable sword into the game both models were textured in 100 percent from scratch and the wolf queen's hunger features a unique enchantment comprised of frost health drain and a built soul trap so it stands on par with the most daedric weapons in the game so i think it's really cool how there are two different versions there's the one that is in the blue palace that you can actually obtain if you want to actually have the unique version of it or if you're lazy and you want to just you know get the cool looking sword and you know upgrade it however you like you can just get it from the steel category in the smithing station. So as you can see me swinging it around it has a nice little animation to it and it has very nice textures on it as well and it's a nice cool design and that's why it comes in at our number four spot so I'd recommend giving this one a try. Coming in at our number three spot, we have the Ultimate HD Fire Effects mod. Now, I actually covered in previous mod episodes, I don't know how many it was ago, but I actually covered a fire mod that actually did something sort of similar, but this one is, you know, an Ultimate HD, and it's comprised of pretty much everything that you can do in the game. The other mod just pretty much fixed fireplaces and the flame spell, but this fixes flame atronaches, the flame familiars, you know, the uh, torches, the flame spells, and anything that has to do with fire in the game as well as smoke this has been changed and added more of an hd texture to it and the description on the mod page says that this mod changes all fire effects in the land of skyrim such as fire spells campfires brazers dragon fire and some smoke effects and it also adds the ultimate hd torch which is a high resolution retexture of the torch and flames so as you can see, I'm going to start spawning in some of these, you know, familiars and some of these flame atronaches as well, and you'll be able to see how much different they look. So I think they look really awesome, and that is definitely why it comes in at our number three spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading this one. Coming in at our number two spot, we have the Mortal Enemies mod. Now, I think this mod is really cool because I've never seen anything like it. It says, this mod removes the ability for all enemies to track the player with 100% accuracy while in combat. Melee combat is no longer about who can sponge up more hits. It's all about spacing, reaction, tactics, and positioning. Now, you may be asking, what's wrong with the vanilla combat? I think that the vanilla monsters have a really fast turn rate, which isn't a problem until you're right next to them, and they're so fast they never really miss a hit. And vanilla monsters also have a huge attack zone that will hit you even if you somehow manage to dodge the actual animation of the hit. So what's the use of moving around if your enemy is always going to hit you if you're in range? Melee combat is reduced to trading hits and blocking is much more important. Mortal Enemies tunes every single attack zone on every attack that creatures can do in the game to match their animation more closely. Dragger stabs and chops now have more narrow zones and wide sweeps have bigger ones and you know they're way smaller than vanilla. Wolves can also miss their leaps at you, and bears are slow but have a big reach in wide zones. So playing around in this mod, I actually noticed that hitting people is a lot more slower, which I think is really cool because, you know, you could swing really, really fast in the vanilla version, and it's not super realistic because some of these weapons have to be super heavy. So, you know, clubbing someone with a really big hit is, you know, really slow as compared to, you know, a softer hit, which is a little faster but not as fast as before. And, you know, it just makes combat a lot more difficult. Even on, like, the novice difficulty, I almost died here. And I just think it's an all-around great mod and it adds more realism to the game. And that's why it comes in at our number two spawn and I'd recommend giving it a try. 
Coming in at our number one spot, we have the Drogheda Legend of Druid's Legacy Home. Now, this is actually a player home that is very unique. It is near Falkreath, and it's an abandoned home left by a slightly wild druid. Wanting to bring forth an ancient tree, the druid was unable to finish their work. No one remembers the druid's name, but their home is a monument to their life's work. If you are worthy, you will find the hidden note near the home, which will give you further instructions. Now, there actually is a little bit of a quest to, you know, get the history of the Drogheda's, and the interior and the exterior are designed beautifully. It's fully compatible for followers and it contains a staff enchanter, an alchemy lab, and an enchanting table. It has safe storages and an outside garden for planning. So I think it is a very awesome house mod and I'm going to be giving you guys a full tour, so let's begin. So as you can see, the tree outside is absolutely huge and the house looks amazing and it's actually built into the tree itself. And I like how all the, you know, twigs and branches all through the house actually match up and make the house really nice. And it's a very beautiful house. And I think it would make a great addition to your load order. And that's why it comes in at our number one spot. So I'd strongly recommend downloading this one. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the top five Skyrim mods of the week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and if you did I would appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new it helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for future mods that you'd like me to cover whether it be in Skyrim or Fallout you can let me know in the comment section below or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description and you guys can follow me there and actually leave me suggestions through there as well. And yeah that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and I'll talk to you guys later.